Good morning, everyone. Uh, well, we're going to move on to the next topic, which is earthquakes. Again, I strongly recommend please take some notes on this, put them in a Google Doc. Uh, that's always helpful. And then uh, share that doc with me. In fact, I'm going to have several assignments for you in this unit. So let's start with some terms. Okay, first off, um, they rarely use the term earthquake anymore. Uh, instead, they call them seismic events, but it's basically the same thing. The point inside of the Earth where an earthquake occurs um, is called the, uh, the focus. Go to that here. Uh, this is where earthquake waves originate. And normally, earthquakes are a result of fracks or uh, fracks, faults or cracks between large blocks. Some of you already know about plate tectonics. We're going to be talking about that next week um, as we go through these units here. But basically what happens is you have two blocks and stress is built up along them until finally there's a rapid release and that's what we mean by an earthquake. The point on the surface of the earth where an earthquake occurs is known as the epicenter. So we're going to be using those terms throughout uh, this uh, unit. All right, so there's a couple of different types of earthquake waves. First of all, we have at the focus three earthquake waves are produced. They're called P, S, and L. P stands for the primary wave, and this is the fastest wave that travels through the Earth. It's the one that seismologists and seismographs will record first. The S wave stands for the secondary wave. It travels second as fast as the primary. And then the L wave is also known as the surface wave. L waves do the most damage because they travel on the surface and they have the most energy. And some people think L stands for largest or the last wave, but it's actually in honor of the guy that first found it. His name was Mr. Love. All right, so what I want you to do is write this down about the Richter scale. Um, basically, the Richter scale goes from 1 to 10. And um, on here, you notice it's sort of like a NASA countdown, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I've put on here uh, the largest quakes that have been known. So the largest one that was ever recorded, I just checked it on the Internet, was in 1960 in Chile, and it was a 9.5. Uh, there was a pretty good-sized one uh, back in 1985 that hit Mexico City, just almost demolished everything except one building in that city. Probably one of the most famous earthquakes was in 1987 in Oakland. Then uh, the largest earthquake ever to be recorded in Virginia was a 5.8. That was in Louisiana County, Louisa County near the town of Mineral back in 2011. Prior to that, the largest earthquake was a 5.5 in 1897. And then we've had some smaller ones like the Manassas quake uh, a number of years back. Now, one thing I want to talk about is that this is not a linear scale. It's a geometric one. So as you go up the scale, you increase the power of the earthquake by a factor of 10. So a magnitude 2 earthquake is 10 times worse than a magnitude 1. 3 is 100 times worse than a magnitude 1, and so on. And these numbers get really big. In fact, we're going to do, I'm going to do another lesson in a few, in a few minutes where we're going to talk about scientific notation. At the very top, you notice I've written that a billion is equal to 1 times 10 to the ninth. So that exponent, the 9, just refers to the number of zeros that are uh, after the first digit. Uh, or another way of looking at it is how many times I've got to move the decimal point to get it to the right of the 1 that's there. Also notice that any quake larger than a 6 is pretty bad. All right, so the question is, can we stop earthquakes? That would be great. Think of all the damage that's done by these and all the people that are killed. But the answer, unfortunately, is we can't. Um, the forces that are involved, as we're going to see next week, are just too great. So some people have tried to predict earthquakes. And here are some of the methods they've come up with. For example, some people notice that farm animals can detect the vibrations. And they'll start acting uh, very strangely. Um, for example, the Oakland quake uh, just prior to that, some people noticed that horses you know how horses neigh? Back in 1987, when the Oakland quake went off, these horses were roaring like lions. They were clearly upset about something. A number of you use uh, wells, okay, to get your water. Have you ever noticed the water pressure changes? That could be a result of the buildup of stress inside the earth and may indicate that an earthquake is about to happen. Or sometimes the P and S wave speeds will change, and that's because as the rocks are squeezed together, the density increases and it makes it hard, okay, for the earthquake waves to get through. And then finally, there's the seismic risk map. 
Um, and basically what people do there is they plot up earthquakes that have occurred in the past and they try and predict where earthquakes are likely to occur in the future. And that's it for this video. I've got some more.